In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may, under your protective care, bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the, Holy, in, the, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord, and that he had spoken to him, and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. 
And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord and with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. assembly of your people. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. I will fulfill my vows before those who fear the Lord. The lowly shall eat their fill. They who seek the Lord shall praise him. May your hearts live forever. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord, or the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. To him alone shall bow down all who sleep in the earth before him shall bend all who go down into the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the Lord that they may proclaim to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. A reading from the letter of St. John. Children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. 
for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him and he in them. And the way that we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I'm the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me, you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People will gather, gather them and throw them into a fire and they will be burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus tells us in the gospel today, remain in me as I remain in you. Remain in me as I remain in you. If we can look back over the last 
14 months, and in all the suffering we've endured collectively, there's been a lot of graces, a lot of challenges. We've adapted a new technology. We have people watching us from Christ the King from their own homes. Those who worried about health are not able to come back to church yet. We've discovered new things. And one of those is the prayer of spiritual communion. I grew up always knowing it because my mom would always talk about spiritual communion. And spiritual communion is different than sacramental communion. Sacramental communion means we are actually in the church and we're actually receiving communion, physical communion in our hands, upon our tongues, into our hearts. Spiritual communion is something different. And to learn that prayer as we've been praying, especially for the televised masses so people can join in who cannot come to receive physical communion, but to still know so much that they are loved and wanted, that any of us who may be incapable of receiving communion because maybe, well, quite frankly, we didn't fast the hour before communion, or maybe we have unconfessed mortal sins, maybe we haven't made our first communion yet, we're just still little ones preparing for that and feel sort of out of sorts, right? How come the big kids get to receive and I don't yet? Maybe we're a guest here who's not Catholic or is having trouble just even in their belief as a Catholic. Whatever it may be, the prayer of spiritual communion allows everybody in the church to participate in the love of Jesus. It's a humble acknowledgement that even if I can't be in church right now, even if I can't receive communion right now, even if I'm not old enough yet to receive communion just yet, God still loves me and is in me and is with me, and I want to be united to him. The prayer goes something like this. My Jesus, and by the way, if you know it, maybe you can chime in with me because I'm worried I'll forget some of it, so you might help me out. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. As though you have already come, I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. It's a really beautiful prayer, and one, frankly, even as a priest and seminarian, I had never learned. I had seen it every once in a while when I'd go home and my mom and aunt would have on EWTN, and it seems like EWTN would be on 24 hours a day in my household whenever I'd go home. The Mass is replayed on EWTN, that Catholic channel, and they'd always have, because of course people watching on TV who can't receive communion, they'd always have that prayer come up and you'd hear it said with this sister, with this angelic kind of accent as she speaks it. But my heart as I pray this and get to pray it every day now as part of now our kind of new tradition to try to reach out to people who can't receive communion hovers over that last line. Never permit me to be separated from you. Never allow me to be cut off from you. And when I come to the gospel today, there are two different movements that hit my soul. One is horrific, and one is filled with beatitude and grace. Both are from God. So the bad news first, the horrific, if you will. When I read this gospel today, Jesus says multiple times, he says, remain in me as I remain in you. But then he says some really startling, sobering things. You cannot do anything without me. Now, if that doesn't hit my pride right where it hurts, you can't do anything without me. Wow. Then he goes on to say, unless you stay connected to him, people will throw you out like a branch and you'll wither. People will gather them and throw them into the fire and they'll be burned, those who do not remain in me. It's a scary, horrific image. And when I pray with this, it reminds me of that last line of that prayer of spiritual communion, never let me be separated from you. And it's the feeling of what it must be like to really be apart from God completely. That's what hell is. God doesn't send people to heaven or to hell. God actually just listens to us and our desires, the way we lived our life, whether we took his word and bore the fruit that he asked us, whether we became disciples whether we love him. And if we love God, then we want to be with him. But if we are so radically separated from him and fall out of remaining in him, 
and to actually leave him, depart from him, then this is what awaits us. It's a scary thought. We priests are people too, and so we have committed sins just like you. We have to go to confession just like you. What a scary thought though, if we're ever in mortal sin, that we don't confess, aren't sorry for, never make reconciliation or mend, because we really are apart from Christ. Earlier today, I had the fortune to attend the ordination for Deacon John Flug, now Deacon John Flug. He's been a parishioner here, his kids came to the school, all of his kids went through our Catholic school here, been a fixture of the parish for many decades. Now he's an ordained deacon. And in the back of the cathedral, there's all this beautiful art. It's from 16th and 17th century Spain and Latin America. One of them is an amazing picture of Christ the Good Shepherd, and he's before the cross, and his open side, punctured by that sword, that spear, is bleeding out streams of both blood, but also a branch, a vine, is coming out of his side, and it curls up, and there's grapes hanging from it. And it comes all the way over to his hand, and he's crushing some of the grapes into a chalice, right, as it comes down, so both his precious blood but also grapes reminds us of the precious blood that is that Eucharistic form of the Eucharist poured into this chalice. And the chalice and the blood from his side is pouring out to feed little lambs at his feet. It shows that connection between communion and what the nature of communion is. That is to say, the visible way, and we can't judge ourselves, we can't judge other people, only God can be the judge, but the only visible way we can say that we're still remaining in Jesus in communion with him is to receive communion. It's a visible way of saying, I believe all that the church holds to be true. I believe that this isn't bread and wine, but really Jesus completely. I believe that he wants to be in me. That's why if we do commit those serious sins that we haven't confessed yet, not just ready for communion, out of integrity. But it also is a state we don't want to stay in for very long. We don't know the day or the hour God will call us home. He gives us a great remedy in confession. He says, I don't want you to be separated from me, even in your own sin. I will love you. I've given my son for you. I will forgive any sin you do. But you just have to come to me and tell me you're sorry. That's all the humility you have to muster. Just admit it. And I'll forgive you gladly. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be in a state that I can't receive communion, that I can't visibly be in communion with the Lord. Because I'm not in visible communion with the Lord here in this world, I don't have an assurance I'll be in it in the world to come. Confession and communion are intimately bound together as healing sacraments. Now that might be some of the more sobering, horrific news that we can be separated from God, but let me tell you also the remedy and the joy, the beatitudinal gift and grace that is also here. What does Jesus say? He says, remain in me as I remain in you. Could it be just that simple? Just remain in me. I know you're imperfect, I know you have sin, I know you struggle as a human being, but just stay with me. That's all that Jesus is asking. Don't leave. Don't lose your faith. Don't stop coming to Mass. Don't cease your prayers. Don't stop trying to be a good person. Remain with me. Stay in covenant with me and communion with me. I know that you need my strength, Jesus says, and I'll give it to you. And this is what's even more beautiful than that promise of the simplicity of being a Christian. Just stay here, stay connected. It doesn't ask a lot. But he says, remain in me as I remain in you. As much as we desire union with Jesus, and want to be close to him, and want eternal life, he wants us more badly than we could ever want him. I remain in you, Jesus says. So we hear in the second reading today, it says those who keep his commandments remain in him. They live his life out. And he in them and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. When he poured his Holy Spirit into your hearts at baptism, he will never take that away. And whatever sin, even the worst sin we could commit, will never take that away. The Holy Spirit lives in you, brothers and sisters, fellow Christians. God is in you. He will never abandon you or leave you. 
And he only asks that we might try to stay with him and preserve that grace within our hearts. So my brothers and sisters, if you haven't learned that prayer of spiritual communion, I highly encourage it. It's really useful on a lot of occasions when maybe we're not ready to receive communion for a host of reasons to know we're still connected to God, still a branch onto that vine. And to do everything we can to remain connected to him because he's always connected to us and gave himself his son Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. May the Lord be blessed, amen. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, amen. Confident in the loving heart of our Heavenly Father, we lift up our prayers and needs to Him. For the church throughout the world, may it be at peace and grow in numbers, being built up with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For unborn children, the poor, the suffering, and the lowly in our world, may we assist them and accompany them in solidarity and charity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the hungry in our world, may the charitable efforts of the Heart Ministry, the St. Vincent de Paul Society, and various food pantries and shelters provide nourishment for body and soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For deeper devotion to and reverence for the Eucharist, may we receive it worthily and with fervor. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our parish children making their first communion tomorrow, may they experience the living Lord and his great love for them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Deacon John Flug and his wife and family, and for all of the men ordained to the permanent diaconate this weekend, may they embody and imitate the gracious heart of Christ the servant. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, and for all those who have died, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in gratitude for the gift of Deacon Randy Park as he prepares to celebrate his anniversary of ordination to the diaconate this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Gracious God, you are the vine and we are the branches. Help us to remain ever in communion with you and hear our prayers through your Son, Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. 
the masses celebrated at Christ the King this weekend are offered for the eternal repose of George and Susan Mack, the well-being of the people of Christ the King Parish, the repose of the soul of Father Ted Richling, the eternal repose of Mary Patricia, Patty McGuire, the well-being of our Christ the King First Communicants, and the repose of the soul of Mary Margaret Margie Wilcox. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Is in glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice, have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead. Grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life and the halls of the heavenly kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. body and blood of Christ. Amen. For those that could not join us today for any reason to join us in the sacramental communion, we join them in solidarity, a prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the blessed sacrament. I love you above all things and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart, as though you have already come. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a moment. I'm excited to introduce two of our young parishioners who are going to tell you about an exciting, important upcoming event here in our parish. So if they want to make their way up here to the pulpit, I want to welcome Vivian and Lily. And I thank you in advance for giving you your wholehearted attention. Thank you girls for being here. Thank you, Father. I'm Lily Pringer. And I'm Vivian Grease. We are fifth graders here at Christ the King School and here to talk with you about Spice. Everyone, raise your hand if you've heard of CTK Spice. Keep going, keep going. Vivian, do you know what Spice stands for? I think so. Supporting Parish Investment in Catholic Education? That's right. Do you know where the money raised by Spice goes? Doesn't it go to the CTK Educational Trust? Right again, you're really smart, Viv. SPICE provides funding for our parish's Catholic educational programs, including the five-day school and family faith formation. Why should these people care about that? Well, maybe they're just nice people. Or maybe they have kids or grandchildren who have attended this school or participated in religious education at the parish or played on CTK sports teams. Or maybe they know that strong Catholic educational programs promote our faith and build our parish community. Well, whatever the reason, Lily and I both think it's very important that every child in the parish is able to attend our school regardless of his or her family's ability to pay. That's right. And when people support SPICE, they make that possible. When is the SPICE fundraiser again? It's coming up quick, Friday, June 4th. And what's the fundraising goal this year? $400,000. Holy moly, that's a lot of money. I know, right? But it's for such a great cause. So, Lily, what should we ask all these fine people to do? They should all go to cgkomaha.org. There, they can register for the event, make a donation, sign up for a watch party, purchase raffle tickets, and see all of the available auction items. Is it true that people can win Super Bowl tickets this year? Yep, it's in LA this year. It'll probably be between 
the Cubs and the Lakers. Nice. Thank you, everyone. Please open your hearts and your wallets and give generously. We gladly accept dimes and nickels, dollars with one or more zeros, and all the prayers you can muster. If you want more information, please stop by the back of church after Mass. Thanks for listening, and God, God bless, bless you. you. I'll be the very first to buy a ticket to the Viv and Lil show on the road. So when you guys are out there, really wonderful job. I'm really proud of you girls. So please, if you can, Spice, as I explained it to you, it helps the entire parish, our school, our faith formation for families, the whole kit and caboodle, we're all one family. So if you can support it by watching it, doing the auction, buying raffle tickets, donating things, coming to it virtually, holding a watch party, whatever it is, but be looking for more opportunities. But I will hope that you will do something to support the whole parish endeavor here in school by participating in Spice. Also, just a reminder that our Wise and Wonderful group, which is kind of for our senior group of people here in the parish, is going to have a, um, a get-together Tuesday, May 4th this week for a pre-Cinco de Mayo happy hour at 3.30 p.m. at Fernando's, just down the street on Pacific Street. So grab the bulletin for more details. Speaking of, if you would kindly stand. And please do take one of the bulletins with you as you go home uh, this evening. And if you would, consider bringing a donation or leaving your Sunday donation in one of the five blue baskets at the five major entrances and exits. We really do appreciate your support. We want to stay connected to Jesus. He's the vine, we are the branches. And through the gift of the Eucharist, through prayer, through confession, through the love of the Holy Spirit, we stay connected to him, living his commandments. So let's strive to stay always with him, to remain with him as he remains in us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>